Okay, we're running. Welcome to Eschenberg Education. This is going to be an example of a particular problem in Jean Coley's, um, what edition is this? Seventh edition, chapter four, number 58. Um, fortunately, this guy does not have friction. Yay, no friction. So what we're gonna do is a little bit of a quick way of doing this. We have an inclined plane object at the bottom. It has an initial velocity of 4.5 meters per second. So that's going to be my V naught. The angle of inclination of this guy is 22 degrees. The question is how far up the hill does it go? We'll call that X. And next, and what's really interesting is the way that I'm setting this up is left is negative, right is positive, so this will be a negative 4.5 meters per second uphill. Now, let's see, what do we got here? Um, the goal of this is that we need to find A and the first thing that we need to do with any good uh, force is we need to draw a force diagram. Now we don't need to know normal force. Why? Because we didn't ask for it and we're not using anything with friction. Yay, no friction. So all we gotta do is understand that if that is um, FG, which is just MG, then this is FGX and this is FGY. Now, using SOHCAHTOA, we can show that this is uh, MG sine theta and that this is MG cosine theta. That is my angle theta if that is angle theta. So this is the 22 uh, degree angle. In this particular case, there are only um, there's only one horizontal force acting on this mass. We can skip the step with um, normal force. We can skip the step with friction force. And why is that? It's because mu sub k is equal to zero. And now <coughs> we can move on to the third step, which is the sum of the forces in the uh, plane of motion, which in this case is x, and that gives me that the sum of the forces in x according to Newton's second law is equal to max, which is equal to the one horizontal force that I have, which is mg sine theta. Ms cancel and my acceleration in the x is g sine theta, so this is negative, not 4.5, dummy, 9.8 sine 22, which gives me an acceleration of 9.8 sine 22, 3.67 meters per second squared, negative, and so that is the acceleration. Um, now, it really doesn't ask for acceleration, it just wants to know how far up the plane it's going. What we need to do is we're going to do this in a one-dimensional motion uh, situation where I'm going to start the bottom as the origin, left is negative, right is positive. The two, the two things that we need are, well, the two equations that we typically use are x equals x naught plus v naught t plus one-half a t squared and v equals v naught plus a t. In, um, in force diagram problems, let me just go over the steps, is find uh, normal force using the sum of the forces vertically is equal to zero. We could skip that because we don't need uh, friction force, but the second step, if there was friction, 
find f sub f using f sub f is equal to mu sub k uh, f n. Next, uh, the third step, this step, is find a using the sum of the forces in x is equal to m a x. And then we use the, uh, the motion equations, the first step being ID what the problem is. It's a 1D motion problem. Even though it is on an inclined plane and according to um, the lab frame, it is moving in the Y and the X, but if you rotate it like this, it's now perfectly horizontal. And that's what we're doing. Two, uh, set origin. Now with one dimensional problems like this, you can set the origin anywhere. Uh, we te I tend to set, uh, start it at the beginning of the motion. Um, so set origin and axes. Uh, three, uh, write down equations you may need. The two equations that we may need, and we are going to need these, equation of motion for position and velocity. So four is ID what you know and don't know. And how I typically do this, anything I don't know is in red, anything I do know is in green. Step five, um, you need to ID now, in this, let's, let's do step four before we move on to step five. I'm not a big fan of numbers and plugging numbers in. Uh, if I need a numerical answer, I will do it. Um, the one number that I do love immensely is um, zero. And so the only zero that we have is this. In this particular case, what I know and don't know I know my initial velocity and I know my uh, acceleration. And I don't know why I drew this, because let me fix it. It's positive. The acceleration is going downhill. That is true. So it has to be positive. It's the velocity vector, since it's going uphill, that's negative. Caught myself. It's always about determining the answer. And if it's wrong, you recover from it. You ID what you know and don't know. We. Uh, we know the final velocity. In this particular case, it's going to be zero. The initial velocity is negative 4.5. The A is 3.67. But we don't know time. And we don't know position. So in this particular case, step five is, is it one equation one unknown or two equations, two unknowns. It's a one equation, one unknown. The, the weakest link in this particular problem is the V equals V naught plus AT. The T is the only unknown. So what we're going to do is we're going to crack that out and solve for Ah, now initially I was all confused because I got a negative V naught over A and A is typically negative because I mean, negative 9.8 gravity and all that stuff. But in this case, acceleration is positive, which means I would have negative time. Whoops. But the initial velocity is negative, so this makes it negative 4.5, or a negative of negative 4.5 over 3.67. And that makes the time one point two three. that's the time that it takes for it to get uphill. 
Now, what we're going to do is we're going to show how high it gets. If that's the time that it takes to get to the top, then x is equal to uh, v naught negative 4.5 uh, time is 1.23 plus 3, uh, whoa, back up, 1 half, 3.67 and 1.23 squared. answer is negative 2.76 meters, or 2.76 meters uphill. <coughs> and that's the first part, determining how far it got uphill. The second part of the problem is determine the total time of the whole thing. To get the time of the whole thing, in this particular case, x equals x naught plus v naught t plus one-half at squared. In this particular motion equation, x naught is zero, just as x naught was zero in the first part. In the second part, it asks for the time to get back down, the total time. That means x final is also zero. So both that and that go away, which means we got negative v naught t equals one-half at squared one of the t's cancels, and negative v naught times 2 over a is equal to t. Now, what this is going to show is that the answer that we're going to get is 2.46. But you just can't say 2.46. Two golden rules. One. The professor is not psychic, and two, assume that he's an idiot, because you need to communicate this to him. You just can't skip any parts. So this becomes negative, negative 4.5 times 2 over 3.67. And just to show it, 4.5 times 2 divided by 3. I get 2.45, which allowing for the little bit of bit rot um, in this, the little bit of rounding pulled it off by one one hundredth of a second, which isn't that big of a deal. So that's it. That's one perfect problem. I went a little bit long, but I wanted to show you guys that there are steps to this. If you follow the steps, everything will work out right. For those of you who want to look me up, on Twitter, I am Dr. B, D R V, and if uh, you go on Facebook, uh, Eschenberg Education. Introductory physics calculus is my business. Thank you and good night.